Hi, everybody, and welcome back to a, another episode of Father Knows Something. This is number 34. That's right. And uh, with me tonight is the, um, the very mischievous Justin. Mischievous. Yes, Mr. Mischievous. I like that. Yeah. I'll well, take that. You know, it fits. If, if the title fits, wear it. Yeah, a little sketchy. Yeah. His socks tonight are amazing. I don't know if you're going to pick them up under the table, but uh, <laughs> he's wearing the new invisible sock. It's quite, it, it's amazing. It almost looks so natural. Yeah. So anyways, tell me about the stories we have tonight. We are going into the world of dating. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, I love when he brings these, you know, fun topics in. Well, we have a lot. We have a lot of good ones. Okay, let's go do it. Okay. I would Starting say off. wait, 65, 65, never been married. I guess I could I could comment about dating. <laughs> yeah, it's not about marriage. Let's go. Okay. Hello. For starters, I love your podcast so, so much. I'm not super close to my dad, so it's great to hear fatherly advice. So my problem, this is going to sound stuck up for a second, but I've never really had an awkward or ugly stage. Ever since elementary school, I've had boyfriends or girlfriends. I'm now almost 21 and haven't been fully single since I was 12. Even when I try to do the whole self-love on my own thing, I'm tempted by someone wanting to go on a date or something like that. I know this sounds stuck up and not like a problem at all, but I'm realizing now that I don't know how to be alone and I have no inner self-confidence. I've always thought I was pretty because other people have told me I was. I don't think I am on my own. That seeped into other aspects of my life and I need constant validation for everything I do. With my looks being the center of attention, I haven't worked on my personality ever. My freshman year of high school, someone summed it up well when they said, thank God she's pretty because she has no personality. I haven't left the talking stage in three years because of this. Either my personality isn't enough or I psych myself out by telling myself my personality isn't enough. On top of that, I'm getting pressured now to start dating for the long term by my family when I don't even know who I am. I know this is more of a question for therapy, but what do you guys think I can do to be alone and work on myself when one, I haven't ever been alone, and two, it's being discouraged by everyone around me. I also feel like your 20s are for dating around, but I don't think I can do it healthily until I know who I am. Thank you. Well, I, I would say one of the first thing that came to my mind is it's amazing that you recognize your weaknesses. Part of our, our ability of growing is to be able to self-reflect, and that you've done this and you're finding where you need to have growth. Um, is a wonderful beginning. First thing that came to my mind is the best place you get for conversation and for growing is working with people. And leaving, dating, trying to have the laws of attraction work right now is discipline for yourself and not even to go down that road and go find a job maybe that you're going to sell. It doesn't matter what the product is. It's, it's, it's even better if you have to go somewhere to create the customer base, you know, door to door or making appointments and finding out uh, whatever that product is that you're believing in. It's going to take you to businesses to have to make a call and say, hey, may I come in and knock on in and share with you what I have? Because I believe it might be a product that you can use. When you do that, you're going to really find a way of communicating because the first thing that people are going to say to you is no thank you. You're going to get a you're going to get the objection and you're going to learn how to handle that objection. And this is all talents and communication that you're going to get and selling. And when you sell a product, what are you really selling? Yourself. You're representing the product. They're buying you, but they're getting the product. So I would start with that. I think that you, it will be a wonderful um, growth period for you. And I think you'll even have fun with it. It will develop new things for you. And it certainly will not hurt. Um, if you go to school, this is something that you're going to do as an, uh, as an addition to your school. This is part of your, 
your your school training. And even though you're not going to get a credit for it, you're going to have tremendous growth from it. And you and also you'll make a few bucks. You might find out that you're amazing at doing this. So take that weakness that you feel and sharpen that knife. Sharp, use that sharpening stone and become an absolute ninja salesperson. Yeah. And that might help you a lot of things. And and the more that you I don't know how much study, you know, if you were focusing in your life just being pretty and that was what was natural for you and you didn't really develop yourself for education, I would start looking into things in history and science and see what you find interesting there because that's other conversations that you may say, wow, it's amazing because when you look at history, it's his story. It's the story of us. And it becomes um, also a wonderful tool for conversation. So I would work on the tools and develop yourself to be much more knowledgeable. And then nobody can say, thank God she's pretty, because now you're rounding yourself off and fuck the rest of them. Yeah. I think too, there's got to be, I I think it's impossible to not have a personality because a personality is just kind of who you are as a Mm -hmm. person and you are a person. So you definitely have a personality. And I think another way to go into this is to Think about what you really like to do Mm -hmm. because you're 21 years in, you definitely have things you like to do. You definitely have passions. And even if you don't, you're in a time where you can really explore and find your passions. Mm -hmm. And so I think in addition to different work opportunities, I think you could lean really heavy, heavily into your passions. And like we've said a bunch of times, I think, then you meet a lot of people very organically Mm -hmm. and not in this way where, oh, it's the pretty girl, but instead it, oh, it's the girl that also loves to do this. Mm -hmm. She loves to scuba dive. She loves to surf. She loves to snowboard, whatever it is. And if you start meeting people that way, you don't need to meet them with the intention of dating. Mm -hmm. You can just start surrounding yourself with this group of people that all has the, have these common interests and you'll start to feel more of that inclusion and not necessarily need a partner And I think your 20s are a perfect time to do it. I don't know why your family is starting to pressure you to date for the long term when you're 21. Like that's, that is the time when you're supposed to explore. And it's not, you like you said, the 20s, sure, they're a great time to date around. They're also a great time to figure out what you want to do with your life, who you want to be, what your passions are, and then meet people that are not necessarily partners Mm -hmm. through doing that stuff. So I think you just lean in. I, this one is less of a problem to me and more exciting to me because it's such an opportunity. Absolutely. I don't see this as a problem at all. I think that she just doesn't recognize that she may have this ability. But when she decides that she's going to go after the things that she loves, and like I said, the the job and all the... it. It really is a developmental thing to go learn how to communicate with people. And you're not interested in the dating thing. I mean, she may be on autopilot with this because she's so familiar with this concept. Yeah. She's going to have to discipline herself to kind of woe back and say, I got I have a focus here. And my focus is to do the following. You also might find different charities that might mean something to you. Mm-hmm. You know, think about the things that you are interested, go online and find out locally what what organizations are around and go to a meeting, you know, meet with them and then see where they, you know, let them lead with what their interest is and where they're trying to take their, their vision to go raise money for their organization or structure something with the organization and then get involved in that concept. You'll be plenty busy between the, between school working and doing this charity. You are going to round yourself up to be an amazing woman. I think uh, one more point too, I think there is something very rewarding about doing things on your own, Mm -hmm. not even necessarily single or in a relationship, but literally by yourself. Mm -hmm. I think when you go do things by yourself, you really get to know who you are. And I think that's a big part of this too, because once you are comfortable and super independent and can go out and just do, you know, you're living life you're doing you and yeah, you have close friends and maybe not a partner necessarily for a while, Mm -hmm. but then you'll build yourself up to really have a, an amazing relationship 
at, in the end, if that's what you end up wanting, or just you'll have great friends and you'll just be independent and strong. Yeah. The, I mean, some people, I mean, if you remember the, the movie Iron Man, he would go down in his, in his basement and build his hot rods. Yeah. You know, you may be into hot rods, you may be into painting on canvas, but as much as that's great with taking solitude time for yourself to process everything that's going on, I really still also, again, I'm going to say one more time, get out there and learn how to communicate with people yep. on a basis where you are forced to use your mind to handle the objections of sales, make, you know, carry yourself, you know, self forward, putting it all in place and really building something. You will find so much reward in that for yourself, let alone the people you're, you know, you're working with. Yeah. It, it can't hurt. And like I said, this is all about an exercise. It's not about anything more than that. It's an exercise for yourself. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, the future's bright. Let's see what you got next. Okay. Number two. Hi, Jerry, Justin, Morgan, and Holly. Holly's not here tonight. She's with her mom. First off, Thank you all so much for the amazing content you create. I always get so excited when I get the podcast notifications on my phone. Okay, on to my debacle. My, 18 female, boyfriend, 22 male, and I have been together for the better half of six months now. I was new to town and got on a dating app just to meet some new people. We ended up hitting it off and have been together ever since. We just recently put a label on things, kind of. Last week, we took a trip together and I met his parents for the first time. We had, a dis we had discussions of how he would introduce me and we both decided that he would introduce me as his girlfriend. Here's where my issue is. After the trip, I realized that I am so in love with him. While I am a serial, hopeless romantic, this comes as no surprise. Boyfriend is, however, the complete opposite. He's got some pretty serious commitment issues and always uses the term autonomous being as if being in a relationship breaks your autonomy. I want to tell him how I feel, but knowing him, I'm so afraid that I will lose him. I come from a bad history of toxic relationships, and this is my first healthy and happy one. I am so afraid to screw it up. Any advice that you have for me would be helpful. My ideal outcome is that he takes the reins on the conversation and gets vulnerable. I don't want to scare him away. You know, a title is, is a wonderful thing, and sharing with somebody that you're in love with them is a wonderful thing. But sometimes, maybe you don't have to say I love you. Maybe you just, in 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 your eyes, and when, when you're with him, and when you talk to him with the respect that you talk to him, that will give him an obvious clue from the way that you are with him, and that you have no interest in being with anybody else, and you're there, that you do love him. So I, I'm kind of the guy at this point in time in my life that I believe that if you take things organically, I love we all love that word organically. It's the word of the twenty of twenty twenties. Yes. And just be yourself. Don't put pressure on anything. Don't press it right now. You're six months into this thing. And if you're asking fatherly advice, I say it takes a year to really know somebody and let them come out of whatever they are. The more that you relax and the more and more that you are more passive, the more and more he will become more aggressive with you and his feelings. Let him come to you. We already, you, we, in our little community here, we already know where you're at and we're going to hold your secret. You just be you, treat them with respect, treat them with, the, with, with love of the relationship and enjoy being with each other. And don't worry about all this other stuff. Imagine you were together for, you know, at this point in time, 10 years. You guys are comfortable. You know where you are. You know that you're, you are basically one, even though you have your own independence, but you walk and talk as holding hands. So. Don't worry about all the other stuff. Just be relaxed. Yeah. That's really what I'm going to uh, share with you and and hope that you'll do because I hear a lot of people that where they they push it and they sabotage it. And I've done it myself. Remember, I was a, uh, 
I, I've never been married. I've had a lot of long relationships, and yes, I've been in love, and yes, I've had my heart broken, and yes, I've probably broken a few. But the the answer is, it works best when it's just organic, and you'll see where you guys go, and then you'll find out if you're the right couple, and if he, you know, somewhere in the middle of this next six months, other things come out and behaviors come out that you know you're going to find there to be triggers with you, or you may find that there's no triggers. Everything he does is beautiful. And he may find that everything you do is beautiful, or he may find some triggers. And you guys are going to go start articulating it because you're now coming out of the fairy tale uh, romance of this... Um, honeymoon period. The honeymoon phase. I've the heard phase. that. The phase. The phase, the honeymoon phase. And it gets down to reality where we have to build a life and that's when you that's when the relationship really gets deeper yep. and better and you're not going to worry about all this stuff so just take it easy put put on i'm not telling you to back away that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying don't worry about titles don't worry about saying i love you don't worry about hearing i love you don't let your insecurities get in your way yeah just just keep just keep a a steady course with the the wind on your sails carry, carrying the ship. Yeah, I've definitely had these feelings before. And you have that worry and you you just, you have something so great. And you're thinking, oh, I can't screw this up. Mm -hmm. And you want to make all the perfect, right, calculated moves. And as soon as you stop thinking like that, it does just flow. And things work themselves out. Mm -hmm. Whether that means it turns into a, great, long, fruitful relationship, mm -hmm. or you realize that you're not right for each other, mm -hmm. which is fine too. But as soon as you start thinking like that, you almost force something and you could screw up something that maybe could have been- Maybe it may, may have been wonderful. Maybe could have been everything. So I'm with you. I like the organically. I think things work themselves out mm -hmm. on their own as long as you, I mean, if you're six months in, if you're happy and you're in love. You don't necessarily need to define it. Just enjoy it. That's right. Don't change what's already perfect. Yeah. Well, let us know how that one develops. All right. What do we got next? Number three. Mm, I'm trying to find a seatbelt one because I feel like we've lost we'll, sense we'll, of the seatbelt. We'll get we'll get the seatbelt. It will show us. Okay. Don't worry. Well, but, maybe in the middle of this one, if you feel the seatbelts oh. becoming a necessity. Again, let's just take, <laughs> let me try this one. Take it organically. Don't push it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Number okay. three. Number three. I don't know what to do. I feel myself slipping away and it's terrifying. I, 20, have been with my significant other, 21, for five and a half years. And we have a six month old daughter together. We were supposed to be married last year but we got pregnant nearly nine months to the day before our planned wedding day. Mm -hmm. So since my wedding dress was already paid in full, we decided to move it back exactly one year. We have been so deeply in love the entire time. He is my best friend. We have been every, through everything together. Mm -hmm. Multiple surgeries, bad housing, awful jobs, multiple moves, an extremely difficult pregnancy, and an even worse recovery, and now six months of our baby's life. Sadly, I've been out of work for over a year now, but it's hard with a new baby and a year gap in my resume. My significant other works nights, so finding childcare and working around both our schedules is completely on me. Luckily, his mom adores our daughter and has agreed to take her whenever I need. On to our problem. I feel me and my significant other slipping away from one another. We never get to see each other. And when we're home, I don't want to bother him because he works so much. So I let him play his video games and chat with friends. I have the baby nearly 100% of the time. He helps where he can by taking care of her in the morning when he gets home and letting me sleep in for a bit and he takes night shifts on weekends. Then when he goes to bed, I get up and take care of our daughter for the rest of the day. I do all our laundry and clean the house and make sure dinner is ready when he wakes up. I also make sure there's plenty for him to to take to work with him as well since he works nights. I get to see him for 30 minutes to an hour and then off he goes. I take care of bedtime routines and night feedings. Then the same thing happens the next day. I'm even more terrified about going back to work because that means I'll be working full time. 
while still taking care of everything in the house and baby. We have had multiple conversations about him doing his part and nothing sticks. This is sounding familiar to last episode. Yes. It's good for a few days, maybe even a week, then it's right back to where we left off. The only time he does anything without me asking is when he can tell I'm already frustrated or when I'm already in the middle of cleaning. We tried having a spicy dance this morning and he couldn't perform. That's never happened before. I felt disgusted and hideous. He insisted it wasn't me. He said he was stressed about money and he was upset he's gained 15 pounds in two months and that I was too clingy. This shattered me. Something broke. I don't know what to do. He asked if we should go to counseling, but we can't afford it right now. I feel distant, like I'm going through the motions. I feel like I'm falling out of love and it breaks my heart. I want this to work. I need him. What would you think I could do? You know, you guys, some people say, wait till we get married to we're established, we're this, we're that. And you guys took the brave path and said, we're going to go through life together. This is what life is. It's challenges. It's things that don't always work the way we want. It's building from nothing. And you guys are a model of that. You're starting with nothing. You're going to grow. And, and, I, and I see that this is difficult. And my answer to you is, together, you got to just hold each other's hands and, and, and recognize to one another this is our journey. And today it's tough. And together, we got to really talk about it and see how we can get through it the best way together and figure out what those, what those answers are. And if you need to, to consult with your parents to talk to see if they have any suggestions and ideas on how to help you to achieve whatever you guys are trying to achieve, Maybe some of your friends and your family can help you get there as far as time relief and see what you can do to pull it off. Because obviously, if you're going to have another job, you're going to need to get some extra help. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to have to um, compensate some other way with the time that you're going to take away from it. And I understand his stress. As a man, he's trying to do what he can. But remember, you guys are, are 20 and 21. You're young. You guys got a handful of responsibilities so early on. So, you know, I, I say cut a little slack with one another and on, your, and on yourselves, mm -hmm. meaning he's got, he does have a lot of burden and he's trying to figure it out. And he's very young trying to figure out where the average guy who's 20 or 21, you know, he just, he's still getting out of college. He's been getting drunk and, you know, yep. fucking every night and doing all kinds of other shit and getting drunk with beer. And he has no clue what it is to have built a family, found a woman he loves and, and say, I'm going to marry her and realize that he doesn't want to live his, his life without you. Cause there's nothing in this world with, that leads me to believe that you guys don't love each other, especially from what I hear in the conversation and the way you say it. Yeah. Far as getting, uh, extra counseling, how to deal with some of this stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm sure that people if uh, are going to chime in and give you the ideas of some of these things that are available. I really don't know the, um, the advocates in, in these different towns that are there to help people. And maybe even the churches or your religious institution or spiritual institution has ways of trying to help you. Mm -hmm. But there's places to reach out for couples that are really in the beginning of their lives and their journey. And I absolutely do not think that your relationship is anything but set up for success. You're just at the first bump in the road. Yeah. And trust me, my darling, life has shitloads of bumps in your road. And you think that it's going to be one bump and the rest is easy. Let me tell you, the, the universe challenges us every day. So we're going to have a great, you know, uh, you know, year or months or two months. And then all of a sudden there's a little bumpy road ahead. And they said, hey, you know, the universe says, I'm going to take that tree and I'm going to pull you back a little bit and see how you see how strong you are. And next thing you know is you go, OK, well, that's it. I, I, I got to go a little further. And. You know, you think you're catching up and they go, not so fast, come back here. It's <laughs> yeah. like someone coming and grabbing the back of your suspenders and pulling you back some more and giving you more, more, more struggle. Struggle B, 
builds character. The more you guys are, are working this muscle is the stronger you're going to get together and no one's going to be able to break you down. Yeah. And that's what this is. It's really holding each other's hands and saying, we're going to get, we're going to be stronger. This is our plan, how we're going to get through this. Don't worry about sex. Don't worry about all that. Other. It's all going to be there because when you finally realize that what you're doing together, that's where love gets deep. Yeah. And that's where everything becomes more of a, of the foundation of, of, to, to continue your foundation of depth of love from when you were very young. You guys are locked for life. You have a child together. You had love together. Even, I mean, even people that, that don't make it in their marriage that are like this, they still have bonds together because of, of all this. So take advantage of this bond and grow. But the most important thing, again, I'm going to stress this, do it by holding hands together. Be open with your frustrations. Be open with your concerns. Be your best friends that you are. Whatever the problem is, you got to vent it. You got to air it. Yeah. Because as soon as you quit venting it and airing it with one another, that's when you start building those walls and you get the disconnect. Yeah. So the, these are the things that I would share with him is do not allow us to disconnect. Yeah. Stay connected. Yeah. I think it is important to, you know, you still... You're always going to be dating, even once you get married. You're still, you're mm -hmm. still dating. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you got to find ways to still have special moments and mm -hmm. still keep that bond strong. And I think it is probably one of the most challenging things ever when it all feels like it's all crashing down around you, and you just you don't even have a second to breathe to recenter and think it's tough right now, but we're working through it to mm -hmm. get you know, to the next stage. And I think when you can do that, you come out, like you were saying, you come out stronger than you, you could do. ever be. You do. So I I think that's the right way to to handle this. I feel like all of the things happening here, maybe, maybe you can find a, a rebalance of activity or find people to help or mm -hmm. just find ways, even if it's little, little ways or little moments each day to take a little bit of the burden off mm -hmm. and just get through this. Cause this isn't forever. So the baby is six months old. Is that what she said? Look, easier times are coming. <laughs> yeah. This, this is a full time job because this baby depends upon you for every single aspect, you and your husband or boyfriend, you know, as they get older, trust me, some of that load gets off a little bit. And as they get really older, it's, it's a different kind of, of responsibility, but it gives you more time to be you. Right now, you haven't you haven't had any time for that. Yeah. So just be patient with it. This is all new. I mean, it's new for people that are successful to the part where they have no issues with money. They have no issues with being able to get help in the house. They already have a you know a three bedroom home built that has a pool in the backyard, and they have BMWs in their garage, and all of a sudden now they have children. It's tough with that. You're doing it raw. And my I say, bless you, and I and I have all the confidence in you guys. I really do. Don't lose communication. That is the key. Mm -hmm. Be sure you hold hands. Be sure you look at each other every night and you tell each other the focus and the goal. And if there's any concern, how small it is, money or something else, just air it with him. So, so you guys have good communication, especially about the, obviously the, the stresses of the house or money or this or that, that you work together to get through this because you will, you will get through it. Yeah. I do think just thinking back to the last episode too, I think reading through this, there is some need for him to step up a bit when, if she sits there and feels like she is drowning in all of this. Mm -hmm. And then she like doesn't want to interfere with his video games and friend time. There's got to be some kind of consolation. There needs to be some effort of him to say, hey, maybe you can't play video games tonight or the next six months. You got to come in and be an equal player here. And then the other thing this leads me to is these comments that are coming out. Sure, he's feeling insecure about gaining pounds. 
he's making backhanded comments about to you saying uh, you're too clingy. I, I don't know enough about the relationship to know if these are just coming out of stress and anxiety and all the things that come with everything you guys are going through or if these are becoming bigger issues. But if they are coming out of the stress, then I think on both your sides, you still need to be able to communicate about it. And he needs to have the maturity to say, hey, I'm sorry, that was kind of out of, you I know, I didn't mean this and I will be a better partner. I think he will. I think if they have the conversation where they sit down and they look at each other and she starts really talking, he does. She, her thing is that neither one want her to become a nag. And that's why I think it's more important that if she uh, says to the fact, this is what's really going on, and I, and I, how can we do this together? He himself, and I believe it's different than, 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 t than the earlier, the last, the last show's issues with her. I think this guy really has a clue. For something tells me inside, this guy's got the clue. All he has to do is have the, they have to is have this conversation. He on his own, I believe, will come, will come true and come through for her. For something inside, something in the, in the way the dialogue happened, I, I think that that is possible. Yeah. So I, I would like to see that, you know, that work that way. And I think that counseling might be a part because they'll, they'll realize that they, they've got a handful of shit going on. Yeah. They really do. And I do believe he'll come through for her. I mean, something about the other one earlier was really, it was much tougher. Well, that one was much more direct in, it wasn't so much a lack of time. It was just a serious lack of effort. Mm -hmm. But in this instance, I still think she shouldn't be afraid to say, hey, I need some help. I think in the conversation, when 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 they describe it with with the proper you know the proper method and the proper mm -hmm. rules, I think it will come through properly that that she won't have to become the person to say like his mother, you need to find time for this, you need to do this, you need that because I that's a trigger, and I think when you go to someone and say together these are the things that we're faced with, how can we approach them? I think it's a, that's a more adult approach yeah. and not her becoming his mother because the last thing he needs is her to be his mother. And she doesn't want to be, she's already the mother of their child. You remember you said there was three children in the last relationship. That's not what this thing is. And I think that she's smart enough to get that. So I, uh, I think we'll try that approach first. And then also see if you can find someone that maybe through the church or counseling that might also help you guys with with healthy direction mm -hmm. on how to you know try to go through the you know these these things. It's all about healthy direction and not triggering one another. And this is things that you learn as as your relationships grow. But the best thing is you guys got six years of foundation in this thing, and that's a that's a meaty meaty uh, thing to to have. That's wonderful. Yeah. So let us know how you do and keep us updated. And by the way, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments on the comment stream, so I would pay attention to those too. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, four. Okay. I recently started listening to your podcast while I'm at work since I'm outside all day long, and I love the advice you give out. So let's cut to the issue I'm having. Okay, I'm here for you. I'm 19, about to be 20 on June 12th, female, and just graduated with my associates from my first college. I'm from Indiana and I'm transferring to a school in Texas to continue playing volleyball and my academics in August. I have been single since around, since August of 2021 when I broke up with my long-term boyfriend. I've had my fun and been enjoying my early adulthood the best I can. But I've been struggling with relationships. I meet a guy, talk to him, get to know him for a few weeks, and then something in me doesn't want a relationship anymore. I wish I could explain it better, but that's just how it feels most times. I've been through the hookup culture and I'm tired of it. Especially as someone who gets a lot of attention from guys, it's hard to just be on my own. I've also come to notice that when I go on a date or hang out with a guy, something feels like it's missing. It's like I can't entirely enjoy a guy for a relationship and that I just need to keep moving along. There's a part of me that enjoys being single and having the ability to talk to whatever men I would like, 
but I'm coming to this theory that I'm running out of time and need to find someone to eventually come home to. Is it smart to get in a long-term relationship when I'm moving super far from home or should I really focus on me for a while? Lady, you have done a wonderful job, even though you've been single for a year, year and a half, whatever that period is. Here's what's going on. Your shit detector is working perfectly. You're meeting these guys and you're saying, you know, I've been down this road before. I don't need this one. And gone. And then you meet somebody else and you say, well, you know, let's go out and see what he's about. And you go, no, nah, I've been down that road before and gone. What you are doing is keeping all the shit out of your life by just taking your time to, to find the right guy who's going to be, he's going to show up and you're going to say, all right, I'm going to give this guy a shot. And you're going to go out with him and go, you know something? This guy gets me and there's something about him that I like. Take it easy. Get to know him, whoever he'll be, because he is going to show up. And the fact that you are smart enough and your shit detector is working perfectly to screen out the, non, the, the non-entities is fantastic. Worry about your friends, deal, deal with what you're doing, playing your volleyball, working on what you're doing in your education or your next level of, of, of your job. And don't worry about it. It's going to play out. You're not too old. You're you're in you're 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 still way way in in the beginning of the, of the game. Yeah. If you're about you're about in space two, you know the second space on the board with about only you know three million more spaces to go. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Just take it easy and enjoy it. We we love the word. I think we're going to call this episode or let it. I know hap- that's let it happen <laughs> organically. Because it will happen. You will find it. And I think you're one of the the more dialed in people that I have listened to where she can say, I've taken this time. I'm getting to know myself. Look, you came out of a out of a relationship that you needed to heal. Most people don't take that time to heal. They just go boom into the next one. They got all this baggage that's not healed from before. It convolutes the whole relationship. The relationship was started with all this fucked up turmoil. And mm-hmm. before you know it, some of it gets worked out. And then you go, oh, I'm still, st- I'm here with this guy. What do I do with him? And you're smarter. You're taking your time. You're breathing. You're healing from it all. And then moving forward. So there's nothing wrong with you. Just keep your path. Keep your, keep exactly what you're doing. And just the only thing that would change is don't worry about it right now. Mm-hmm. Forget about it. Just take <laughs> take your time. Yeah, it's another take the pressure off moment here. Yeah, um, the a lot of the pressure is coming from the additional information. A lot of my friends and fellow graduates have been getting married, having children, etc., and most of them aren't even twenty one yet. I'm scared I'll fall behind, and everyone will think I'm acting immaturely. Any tips are appreciated, and I think back to, yeah, I mean, I'm from Minnesota. A lot of my friends are married. A lot of people from my high school all have kids. And yeah, I, if, I'm if i sure if I was still in that ecosystem, you could get a little bit of that pressure, especially now. But even at 21 and 22, when I was in New York, just kind of doing whatever I wanted, not didn't have any plan or path or anything. I was just kind of living in the moment. People were back home doing the same thing. And I just, you just got to take the pressure off. And she says, at this point in time, I don't have an ideal outcome. I just really want to figure out which direction I should go because I'm mentally exhausted from the confusion and frustration I bring on myself. And I think that's the exact thing is just do what you can to not focus on that because it do, it's just that's, so, it doesn't matter right now. Absolutely. Go live your life. Enjoy going out with everybody. 21 years old, worried about getting married and having, fuck it, you're doing great. Yeah, and you don't need someone to come home to. I mean, and, and, I still have roommates. Like, don't, don't let these people start putting pressure on you and don't buy into this shit. You got the best handle on this thing. You just take your time and you enjoy it. And I'm telling you, it's going to happen naturally. It's going to be big. It's going to be deep. And you're going to be... Far better for it. So just relax because the guys that you're going to attract as you're going on with, even if you take off another year or two before you meet the right guy, I mean, you might meet some people in between. Even 10. 
But the bottom line is the guys are going to be more mature, more developed, more seasoned as you're going through, more in tune to you. And when you guys go out, it's going to be a much more mature relationship. It's going to be better on every aspect. So pace yourself. Yep. Absolutely. Just relax. Take off this pressure. Just go out and enjoy whatever you're doing. Go play volleyball. Enjoy the people around you. When you go out, no pressure from anybody saying, who are you talking to? A lot of accents tonight. <laughs> yeah. They're all, just be you. Enjoy. Enjoy your this time in your life. Because let me tell you, it goes by really quick. So just relax. Breathe it. Enjoy it. Savor it. Well, and again, I don't see this one as a problem. This is more of an opportunity. Yeah. This is an opportunity. I mean, you're transferring to another school right now. So you have the chance to just dive full in on whatever you want. I don't know what kind of, like what you like to do, but study abroad, go like explore, go mm -hmm. do all these opportunities that you, you can because you don't have someone you have to go home to. So make that a positive and not a negative. I got a question for you. Who's the problem here? She's her own problem. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of your way. Go enjoy yourself. <laughs> there is no problem. Just relax. Okay. Everyone that is your watchers, just know that after this show, if you wish, we can you can join our Patreon. We're gonna have an extra story. So let's keep going. Number five. Number five. We're let it roll. Hi, Jerry, Morgan, and Justin. I love the podcast and I listen to it every week. And all the great advice you have given to other listeners has been so interesting to listen to. So that's why I decided to write in myself. Thank you. My question is. How do you start trusting again when you have been hurt multiple times? I, 23 female, have had three relationships. All have been short, and I'm not even sure I can call the two of them real relationships since I was never asked to be the girlfriend officially. Let me tell you shortly about them so you know what kind of trust issues I'm dealing with. The first one was my first real relationship ever. It was with this lovely girl, I'm bi, and we dated for about four months. Things were well, but then suddenly, one day, she didn't reply to me much, and a few days later, she broke things off over the phone, saying things like, did you really think this could work between us? I was devastated, and it took me a year to get over her. Next was with a guy. He led me on for almost a year that he liked me and wanted to be with me. We did everything couples do, talked daily, hung out regularly, slept together, etc., then one day, after eight months of us doing all this, he said he never even liked me romantically. All he wanted was sex. Again, I was devastated. We stayed as friends, and by friends, I mean we slept together regularly, but it was more casual. Although, I did continue to have feelings for him. I then officially broke contact with him when I met this last guy I dated. My latest relationship was, was with a guy that was everything I ever wanted. He was kind, funny, caring, and most importantly, truly liked me for who I am, which he expressed to me often. Things were amazing for the first three months. We saw each other several times a week. We went on dates. He met all my friends on my birthday, and he talked about how much he liked me all the time, how he's going to make me his girlfriend, and even how he thinks he would get along with my parents. Then one night, he was supposed to come over, and he didn't. He disappeared for the whole night, didn't answer my texts or calls. The next day, he turned it all on me, saying that no guy wants someone they've known for three months calling them worried, like I did. He gaslighted me into thinking I did something wrong when all I did was be worried about him. He broke things off with me a few weeks later, saying he needed time because I scared him off. Now I can't seem to trust people, especially men, anymore. Every time someone shows interest in me, I get suspicious and turned off. I want to let someone in my life but the fear of rejection is too big. So how do I start trusting again? Good question. You know, it seems like you're going from one relationship to the next relationship to the next relationship. I don't know if there's a time between these things or any space. Um, I think there is a little bit because it took a year to get over. That's right. There it, was, it seems like there is some gap, yeah. So, you know, the fact that if you do take time, and especially with the one with the year gap, you, fed up, you found a guy that things were really developing well and on the proper track. It takes a year before you really start seeing the real person. 
everyone's best behavior in the um, in the period of infatuation is it's one of those where they say you know colored glasses, rose glasses, or you don't see the whole picture. There's things that are filtered out. So it's really important that you slow up. I mean, if you want to have a physical relationship and you're willing to take that gamble, you're you're one of the things that you are doing is you're hindering the ability of really to get to know one another. So if you can figure out how to get to know each other through all that passion, rather than just slow it up and spend time and become friends first, that is the key. Mm -hmm. I've had these relationships. I had relationships that we were physical within the first 22 minutes. And I had relationships we didn't become physical for, for months if we ever became physical. And I will tell you, I've had some, the ones that were the deepest were the ones that I, that, that I did not become physical at first. I really got as much as I wanted to be physical with them, but I got to know them. We got to really see how we interacted and, and got along and how we thought. And the ones that I made a past year, it was interesting to see the depth of those relationships. For sure. You have to just be patient to let it to allow yourself to grow and let the friendship grow more than anything. And then you can decide if lovers are really it. And when you have the conversation with them, when they say, gee, you know, can we have a, uh, an overnight? The answer is, yeah, I'd love to have an overnight with you. And, but you know, I, I don't think that we should be lovers, but I would love to wake up in the morning with you and have coffee. Mm -hmm. I would love for you to be the first one I see in the morning and see how they react to that. Yeah. I mean, I had a friend that recently we went through this and, and, you know, he took off and left her. He said, I'm out. And he goes, oh, yeah, you know, I obviously you don't have the same feeling for me. And she said, I do have that feeling. If he really liked her, I really think he would have said, I would have, because I mean, I look at that because I've been there. Yeah, yeah. And I've said, I can't wait, can't wait to, you know, to hold you tonight or, or lay next to you. And wake up in the morning and make and make your breakfast. Right. That's that's the kind of thing that you're looking for. You're looking for that long term care that that person's really going to be there for you and that they want to be around you. I think this is. I have a, I have a few points on this. Okay. Because I I can relate to this uh, in a few ways. The biggest step here is working on yourself in the sense that. You have to try, and I struggled with this for a long time. You have to try and take all these bad experiences. Mm -hmm. Sure, they're great to have as reference points and, and for red flags and things, but you cannot carry forward this fear of rejection mm -hmm. or try to put a label or define things or figure out what you have with someone too early because that, like in the other story, that could potentially kill the whole deal. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important. You, it's one of the hardest things to do, but you, you kind of have to open yourself up, make yourself vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And if you're not ready for that, then you're not ready to date. You're not ready to be with someone. Wait until, don't force it, but wait until that comes back fully. Because then if you meet the right person and you're not truly ready, you're you, going to wreck something that could have been everything. You just derailed a beautiful opportunity. Yes, you want to let someone in your life, but it sounds like you're not ready if the fear of rejection is too big right now. Mm -hmm. I think you got to wait it out. And then yes, once you meet someone, time is really the player here because it's interesting when you start as friends or you start as a one night stand. I've seen successful relationships start from sexual intimacy. I've seen successful relationships where people were friends for five years mm -hmm. and then they you know, they, they start an, a relationship. So I don't think you can say, okay, let's push off the intimacy and I don't want to be with anyone like that. You just got to kind of fall into it. When I first moved out of Minnesota, I was fresh off of terrible breakup. I was in no place to have a relationship. And one of the things that you struggle with sometimes when you're in this like hookup phase, dating phase is you want to make your intentions clear and say, hey, I'm not looking for something serious. But at the same time in your head, you're like, I don't want to close that door because what if, what if I just meet the perfect person and I go into it and I say, yeah, I'm not looking for something serious. And then you kill that whole thing. So you, you always got to kind of leave these doors open 
yes, there's going to be the asshole guys that will take advantage of you and make you think you're in love and then they, all they wanted was just to hook up with you the mm-hmm. whole time. I think you just got to wait until you're ready again, but you have to be vulnerable. Yeah, I, I don't know why you have to. anyone has to put a title on what I'm going to do. I have to say I'm going to take it one day at a time and organically and we'll see where we go. Yeah. I love back to the word. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's just my experience because it's a really tough place to be, especially when you're carrying from your past into these new situations and coloring it from the start. Great job interpreting it. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to do- You get a guru, one guru star. Okay. Where do I put it? <laughs> just right on the, right, where, on the laptop. Wherever you want to put it. It was very good. Okay. So we're going to do one more. Okay. And this one is a short question. But this is a big answer because I think this applies to a lot of different situations. Is this a seatbelt or not really? No. Okay, let's this go. This one's more just, here's, here's kind of a problem that I think a lot of people face and are very uncomfortable with and don't know how to handle. Let's go for it. So we need kind of an answer for the masses here. Okay, I'm ready. Hi, I'm a 27 female and a good friend of mine has just gotten out of a five-year relationship. He's pretty devastated over this. I want to be able to support him in a better way than saying juvenile comments of, oh, the two of you grew apart or you guys weren't meant to be together. Do you have any advice on how to help a friend grieving a relationship? Yeah, just go out and have a good time with them. Take them out and just just have fun and be light. Take them bike riding. Get them out so he's not sitting and dwelling about things and just be a friend. Yeah. Simple. I would just... Like I said, go out and do things. Go take him to the art museum. If he, He'll he start to come around with other people. You'll encourage that with him. If you say somebody, I don't say as far as dating. I mean, just to go out with other friends that you may know that he has. And, right. You know, or get a group of people say, hey, we're all going to go to the museum. We're all going to do this. We're all going to go horseback riding today. Get his ass out. Don't let him dwell. Don't let him sit there. Get him living. And once you have him, once you resuscitated his breathing mm-hmm. to he's he's able to sustain himself on his own, he'll start coming along and, and growing further. Buy him a book, buy him things that he, if you know he likes to read, get, you know, think about the book that you give him or, you know, introduce him to things that he may not have normally have done. Even if yeah. you guys, I would go find, find a painting class, say, hey, dude, let's go, let's go paint. Let's try something different. I yeah. don't care if it's ceramics or watercolors or paint by numbers or something different, but find new things to develop his interests out of what his norm was. Right. And that will start stimulating other parts of his brain. It'll speed up the, the recovery. And this goes for everybody. This is not just him. I mean, we should all always open up our, our horizons to new things. We, we find when we open up those horizons for new things that we can do even by ourselves, it makes us stronger within ourselves. Yeah. You know, I mean, I took up a hobby that I carried on for years with, you know, with, with, with what I do. And it, that's my, that's my space. That's where I go. And then I see that I accomplished something. And I go, wow, this is just, I made it better this time. I mean, I, I may have created this thing, you know, 30 years ago, but God, today I really dialed this whole new concept in with with new technology yeah so find out what those are and and it's not bad again to expand outside of those comfort zones into new ones and you grow yeah i think that's great i mean i when i went through a really bad breakup i kind of internalized a lot of it so i wasn't very forthcoming with what i was going through with a lot of friends and things but Mm -hmm. in this situation if i had someone that could have done this for me, that mm-hmm. that would have been like the best thing how come ever. You how come you didn't come to me? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know you. <laughs> but like, I remember I would just do anything to distract myself. So I would stay after school and hang out with a bunch of people and even watch like shows that they're watching or mm-hmm. things when I wasn't even that interested in it just because it wasn't me back home sitting in my room going into an anxiety spiral about this and like, like that's how you stick in it and you'll be in it a lot longer. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if you if you can get them out and get them distracted and go do random fun things, I think that's perfect. Yeah, and and he will grow. Yeah. And he will get healthier. Yeah. Mentally, mentally healthier. Yeah. And you'll have a good time too. 
That's true. To win win. Okay. Perfect, well, I want to perfect th- way to end. I want to thank you all for joining us on episode 34. And next week we'll be back with number 35. And right after this show, uh, join our Patreon. We would love to let you hear the next ones that we have for our little bonus show. I'd like you all to know that we're going to have a, 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 a live show in Minneapolis. Be online. Check us out. We're gonna, The whole crew will be there, both from Two Hot Takes and from Father Knows Something. So join us. And we look forward to having you with us. The links for tickets will be in the description, or you can go to momenthaas.com slash THT, and we hope to see you there or virtually. And due to this live show, we will not be having a show next week, but we will be back the following week. So tune into the show to get your fix, and we'll see you there. Bye now. 